Hey everybody, Winstreak here. Today's video is going to be a quick tutorial to start a top-down idle game. Uh, first we're going to look at a base or a town, some sort of safe area, and we'll be able to keep this area safe in a bunch of different simple ways. It's whatever you really want. Something like just having solid barriers so enemies can't get in or automatically destroying them if they overlap. This area should be the main place for upgrading your character, shopping, storing valuables, forging, and any other manual activities. It should be the first place the player wants to go when they come back. That way they can buff up and then try to move up to a new zone or face a challenging boss or wherever they got stuck at last time. And from this area we should be able to reach different zones that we want to go to. Mine set up as a teleportation. Essentially as long as you are on the rug you'll have a menu popped up and you can just click and head to wherever you need to go. So this brings us to our next stage, the enemies. The simplest way I could think was to just have an overlap check and while our hero is overlapping we will just spawn a bunch of enemies. Another common way that this is done, each spawn has their set amount of enemies in it already so when you show up you'll see say 10 enemies. Uh, when you kill one or two enemies it starts a countdown timer and say two seconds passes and then However many of those enemies you killed there are going to respawn, so it just keeps it at 10. In my game I didn't want to necessarily cap an area to a specific amount, but I also had to build in something so we didn't have enemies continuously spawning forever, even in zones we're no longer in. So I built in a 50 second time check that I attached to each enemy, and anytime I hit them it'll reset that 50 seconds. And I do this with Unix time and just setting that variable on the enemy. And then I have three simple calls. Essentially on created, my enemy gets the initial 50. Anytime I deal damage to an enemy, it also resets that 50. And then finally, if their time is less than Unix time, I just despawn them. And I was a little worried about checking each enemy that's alive, but I did run a stress test and had 1300 enemies and it hardly was noticeable on the lag and it was only when I was killing a lot of enemies at once. Uh, it seems to run this quite easily and I don't expect to have 1300 enemies up but I know I can now but I imagine that number will slowly go down as I add more events such as item drops. The enemy AI I'm not gonna get into too much but essentially we have move to behavior and then two different line of sights so we'll have a long range line of sight and if they spot the player they will move to the player and that should put them in the shorter range and if they're in the shorter range they're going to attack and if they get to the damaging portion of their attack while they're still in that range they will damage the player and then obviously if they are no longer in that small range they will go back to using their large range and then of course the player character has its own AI but first we break him into two different modes he has a variable boolean for is idle and if it's false it simply allows me to control him with the keyboard and if it's true I block the keyboard inputs that way we don't have weird interactions where both the AI and the player are trying to manipulate him at once and in order to move him again you just have to turn idle off and then while he is in idle he runs a very basic AI routine uh, he'll start out checking is there any enemy nearby yes or no and if no we'll find the closest enemy once that enemy is found, we'll automatically move to the found enemy. We'll recheck is there enemies nearby in case something killed the enemy on your way there. And if yes, we'll attack. And then we'll once again check is there an enemy nearby. If no, find nearest. And it will just continue to loop, finding you the closest enemy, moving to him, attacking until it's dead, and then moving to the next closest. And that is essentially all you really need to get your game going. The rest will be adding your events to handle death and experience leveling, paragon levels, all that fun stuff that actually makes idle games exciting, which I plan on doing to my game and I'll be running some more stress tests and trying to figure out a more complicated AI for our hero so he can try to target multiple units at once and be more efficient with killing. So hopefully this was useful to some of you other devs and I'm excited to continue to build my project and keep you all updated. Have a good one.